Okay. So I wanted to start telling you a story today. Uh, it's a story of a journey. It's a story that started in a bar. Like all good stories do. About 18 months ago, my director and I were out one evening with some representatives of one of our technology vendors. And as is the case when someone's trying to get you to spend a lot of money on something, it was a pretty nice bar with a nice view. And we were all fairly inspired. And there was a lot of, I think we call it visioning that was going on that night. We started talking about books, specifically digital books. And the conversation moved from us purchasing content and buying books to students creating their own books. And in the middle of that conversation, my director slammed his fist on the table and said, we will have 1,000 student-generated books this year. And again, with most stories that start in a bar, the next day I had some regrets. Um, I, I had a bit of a headache, and it was about that number. I, I'm convinced it was only about that number. A thousand books. We're a school of about 500 students, and most of them are under the age of six. Um, but out of this, the Right Now project was born. So we had a thousand books to come up with. We went, we talked to staff, and this really went away from just that number and became a project about creation, about student empowerment and student voice. We did some PD, and the books started trickling in. At first, they were a little on the rough side, but the books were coming. And then something absolutely amazing happened. People got excited about this. Students were coming up to us saying, can I make a book for that project? We had students in our high school who had already finished some work who came back up and said, can I redo my work for no extra credit, I might add, because the format of the book was appealing to them. And then we had a staff potluck. And out of that, without any prodding from anyone in IT at all, the teachers developed a cookbook. Things were going well. We were on our way to 1,000. But we realized we had a fairly significant problem. We had, at this point, over 100 books. We had no shelves to put these books on. Where do you share things? We couldn't use any of the commercial stores that are out there. The Apple bookstore isn't available in Indonesia. We've got parents from all over the world, different levels of tech understanding. How do we publish a thousand books? We can't keep up with publishing when we're at a hundred books. So, there was a need. What did we do? Of course, we made our own bookstore, our own online library, with the simple goal of having people be able to share what they've made. It was a little rough at the beginning, as things usually are, but students were a little challenged with this. They made these books, but there wasn't a lot of feedback. Until the first day, when one of our first graders had her grandmother leave a comment on our site about her book. Not the most robust comment in the world, but this kid was so excited, and so were her classmates. The comments started coming. Other schools in town started downloading our kids' books, and their kids started posting comments back. And then, a really amazing thing for us happened. One of our high school students had produced a kid's travel guide to Bali in English and Chinese. Other books started coming out of that same class, and our elementary school started picking up these high school created books as primary resources for their units of inquiry. Things started coming together. We had some success. We went back to our store and took a look at what is it that we were really trying to do. What we really wanted to do is we wanted to store a library that was open. It would allow multiple nationalities, multiple languages, multiple formats. We had books coming in in PDFs, EPUBs, .mobi files, whatever that is, uh, iBook author files. It had to handle it all because our kids were giving us things in different formats and our community was picking them up in different formats. So we came up with a different version of the bookstore. What we were really looking for was basically a YouTube for books. Something where we weren't judging the content. The content was judged by the people who were accessing it. And so where are we? We're one year in, almost, to this project. We're not at a thousand yet. Uh, I'm not sure when we're going to get to a thousand. But we have five schools now that are involved in five different countries. And they're all posting their content. We've stumbled across something. There is a need out there that's easy to use people being able to share their own things. 
It's not a really flash bookstore. It's not keeping up with what the people in California can do. But there was a need, and the big takeaway from this for me was the responsibility. And I think that's what this conference is all about. There was a need that needed to be filled. We need to make some change. What was available for our students didn't do what they needed it to. Find a need, fill a need. So, this bookstore may not exist next year. It might be around in 10 years. We have no idea where this is gonna go. But the need that our students have today, this store is filling it. So I'd love to have everyone in this room be part of our bookstore. But what I'd love even more is for people in this room to go back to your schools, find out what that need is. Fill that need. Make some change. Don't get caught up in the, uh, it's not gonna look very good, or it's not gonna have this function. Don't be paralyzed by the what it can't do. Look at what it can do. Start, create, create something, but then don't stop. Creating something that's good is still better than creating nothing. Iterate, create again. Find the need, fill the need. So that was the main message that I had on this. It's kind of the theme of this conference. Make some change. Thank you very much.